Frankenstein's got a journal, Wolfman has a blog. Swamp Thing tweets from down in his bog. Pete and Nash read it all, and now they're trying to see what's going on with these vampire diaries. Hello, welcome to the Vampire Diaries, a The Vampire Diaries podcast, where a guy who has never seen the show watches the series with a super fan. I am the titular PD. Let's just say I put the PD in the band PD. But please call me Pete. And I'm here with my co-host and co-parent, Ash. Hello. What's up, Pete? Ash, there's some breaking news. What? Some breaking vamp news. Breaking vamp news. Yeah, that actually came out like a couple months ago, but (laughs) it just broke for me. At least it's not like from 2009 news. (laughs) No. Yeah. Brothers Bond Bourbon, Ash. Tell us about it. Paul Wesley and Ian Summerholder, 10 years after the Vampire Diaries premiered, speaking of which, they're doing a whiskey, a bourbon, Ash. That's so crazy. Um, Ian Summerholder came up in my Twitter feed, and he said something about his a whiskey or something. Mm-hmm. I clicked on it. The bros, the Salvatore bros. That's perfect. Um, I don't think you can buy it yet, but I signed up for the newsletter, Ash. Uh-huh. Can't wait. That's awesome. They drink so much bourbon in the show. Yeah, I think that's what inspired it and also yeah. wanting to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always good. Yeah. But it's such a great idea. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Brothers Brothers Bond Bourbon, Ash. That will be a good gift to give. It would be. And then you'll be like, and then listen to our podcast so you can know why this is a thing. Yeah. Oh, I would love to advertise for Brothers Bond. That'd be great. Drink Brothers Bond while listening to the Vampiti Diaries. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, another thing that happened probably three, four years ago, Drake, he has a whiskey, mm-hmm. Virginia Black mm-hmm. whiskey, and I got some of it. It's good. I like whiskey. I like Drake. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ash, we have global listeners. That's crazy. Shout outs to our listeners in Switzerland. All right. Germany. Mm-hmm. Ireland. Wow. The UK. This is nuts. India. One person in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, there's a couple more, and maybe I'll shout you out next time. We're in the United States of America. <laughs> and if you're one of these friends from not there, let us know. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Totally. I really don't even think about that people are listening to us while we're recording this. I mean, I know they're not listening while we record it, but like while we're recording, I'm not mindful that the people are going to be listening. I'm just chatting about the show. Only our pug listens live. (laughs) That's true. She's here every time. Yep. She's over there. She's not quite snoring yet. We probably disturbed her Mm -hmm. by starting our pod. Oh, I'm sure she'll be snoring soon enough. How um, rude of us to start our pod in the middle of her nap. Mm, so mean. Oh, she just snored. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't care. Uh, season 1, episode 11, Bloodlines. Bloodlines. Exciting stuff. We are halfway through the season, Ash. I know. It's so exciting. I just want to watch every episode in a row, but we just can't record podcasts fast enough to do that but i i'm so excited for you to learn more about the show and i'm so excited for you to hear about some of your pete dictions that are spot on and some of your pete dictions that are exactly wrong oh you have both oh man and i love it and i'm super excited for you to find out the truth yeah i hope people like our friends in germany who are listening are like Pete, you are wrong about this. <laughs> <laughs> or, wow, Pete really got this spot on. That's how I'm feeling. I like when I'm listening to something and I've seen the the content that uh, the person, what, what they're reviewing or whatever, mm-hmm. I like to be like, no, you fool, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, probably there'll be some of that tonight. I know. It's just, yeah. I can't wait for you to keep watching the show. I have a Pete Diction based on the recap that played before the episode. Oh, really? Yeah, and I don't... I guess it did come true, but we were watching the recap. They Mm -hmm. play a little recap. I guess they probably did this on air, but they certainly do on Netflix. Mm -hmm. 
um, I was like, man, the Bonnie being a witch and the cemetery stuff is being featured heavily in the recap. Mm-hmm. I was like, we're going to hear some more about that. Bonnie's going to be popping back off. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, maybe we'll see what's in this tomb. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll see some tomb raiding. <laughs> and it does play into this episode. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So that is a thing that editors do uh, for the recap. Mm -hmm. If you've got a whole series, you're going to put up front the stuff that uh, is going to play into the episode. Yeah. Because for this show where we're at, there's 10 episodes of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to play the stuff that's going to work for the episode we're about to watch. Yeah. You want to make it make sense. But Ash, after the recap, of course, is the cold open. Yes. Let's get into it. Stefan called Elena on the telephone <laughs> about the picture of Catherine. He leaves a message. She's just passed out, probably. Probably. She's in that car accident. Yeah. She, um, oh, but this, him leaving this message functions sort of as the VO, usually from the yes. vampire diary that he writes at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So instead of like being like, dear diary, blah, 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 I'm eternal, all this stuff, <laughs> he's like, Elena, Catherine, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're getting yeah. some of that exposition. Yeah, the exposition, and also it's usually a little bit of a recap. Even though there is a recap that plays before the cold open, but it yeah. does sort of touch on what had just happened. For sure. Elena, still in the cold, op- cold open. Elena, we see the accident again. The Jabberwocky <laughs> dance crew member <laughs> cracks their bones back together and goes to the car and this is where we saw at the end of last episode, mm-hmm. but we see a little bit further. Yes. And right as this uh, America's Best Dance dancer. Crew member <laughs> is rolling up, we do see a little bit of the bottom of mm-hmm. his face, I would mm-hmm. venture to guess. Okay. Um, he zooms away. Yeah. And then Damon is there suddenly. Yeah, Damon shows up. Yeah. Was, Damon was in the woods mm-hmm. previously. Trying to meet up with um, the Weatherman. <laughs> yeah, Logan the Weatherman. <laughs> Logan Weatherman. Trying to meet up with Logan. Logan obviously didn't come because he was killed by Alari. And <sighs> so Damon was close by and was able to come to Elena's rescue. Yeah, and I just kept thinking, so sad to see the Ford escape like that. <laughs> Never want to see that again. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> All right, so we're in the main... The body of the episode, Ash. Mm -hmm. Alaric has a diary, too. I know. So many diaries. Mm. And is his a vampire diary? I would say uh, my Pete Diction is, no, it is not. Maybe a vampire hunter diary. Mm -hmm. But it could be authored by a vampire. It could be about vampires. There's lots of meanings behind the vampire diaries. Biography, autobiography. Exactly. (laughs) Um, he's remembering his wife, Ash. We see some happy times with his wife, who yes. we heard. What was his term? It's like, I lost her young or something yeah. like that. So then we, were, so then I was like... <laughs> yeah, don't mm. say we. Yeah. <laughs> I already knew. Was she a vamp or what? Oh, but we see some crazy stuff. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. All right. Damon is driving an old Chevy Camaro, Ash. Mm-hmm. A light blue matches his eyes Camaro. Yeah. Damon brought Elena... To Georgia. Not Nolans, but Georgia. Georgia. I liked before they cut to them just driving when he's like assessing her injuries and stuff and she's trying to stand up and everything. Mm. I love how concerned Damon was for Lena and like you could tell that he actually did care about her. Mm. Okay. Take that in, into consideration in my brain file. Okay. <laughs> Stefan calls, but Elena doesn't want to talk to him so damon answers the phone mm-hmm. elena makes damon promise not to do mind control no cajoling on this trip <laughs> no cajoling and uh yeah damon is snippy with stefan Ooh, blah, blah, blah. well and stefan just still doesn't trust damon and so he's just worried that damon's gonna do something to elena and you know yeah well damon has done some wild stuff right and we see more wildness this app come mm-hmm. on damon Bit of a wild card. <laughs> Alaric has a ring, too. Mm-hmm. He's looking through his car. He didn't have it on. 
Hmm, and he didn't look too old. <laughs> so he doesn't have one of these young to old rings. No. He's searching through his car. What do you think the ring could be? Like, he keeps, they keep talking about it. They keep showing it. They're making a, a big deal ring? out of it. Yeah. Ooh, I wonder. Oh, here's a major Pete Diction off okay. the top of the dome, Ash. Okay, what? All right. There were three rings. Catherine, Damon, Stefan each had a ring. Damon lost his when he killed Alaric's wife. And so now Damon's wearing Catherine's ring. Mm hmm. Prediction. That's, and so Alaric. That's a good prediction. Alaric has Damon's ring and he's trying to find the friggin' vamp mm-hmm. who left the ring at the scene of the murder. Oh, man. What a Pete Diction. All right, but Jeremy is just. <laughs> Jeremy just walks up. Alaric's looking through his car and then Alaric's like. Oh, here's the ring. Yeah. <laughs> he found it. He just found it. Uh, and Jeremy talks to Alaric about the old journals. Mm-hmm. Because Alaric had given him that home, that homework assignment yeah. to bump his grade up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I found these old journals and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then Alaric's like, good, good choice. Because that's basically exactly what he wanted Jeremy to do. Yeah. So maybe Alaric kind of knows Jeremy's in this family or something. Could be. Could be. Stefan, back at the school, mm-hmm. even though he doesn't go there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> chats up Bonnie. Which is so hard to like keep showing up at your school when you don't go to the school anymore. The admin would be like all over you. Like, he, wait, why aren't you in school? You're a kid. You're supposed to be at school. Yeah. But he just keeps showing up without actually attending and has no problem. Yeah. Who's like the truant officer at Mystic Falls High? I don't know. The truant officer might have been cajoled, so <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stefan needs a spell from Bonnie. Stefan's like, I've known a few witches over the years. Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie tries a spell to find Elena, but she can't summon her power. Hey, she can't even float that leaf around. Ash. No, she can do anything. Obviously, the situation with, was it Emily? Mm-hmm. Emily in, Bennett. In her body has rocked her, Ash. Totally. I guess she hasn't tried to do magic since then because it seems like she's just finding out that she can't do anything. Yeah, but also what that in this uh, world that happened a day ago or yeah, two days ago. True. Like it wasn't that long. This whole 11 episodes that's taking place in three weeks or something mm-hmm. so far. Um, Damon. <laughs> Damon's driving and he's like, what do you think? Us vamps hang out at a vamp bar and grill? <laughs> And then he parks, like, in the same sentence, and they walk into a bar yeah. where there is a witch. I mean, to be fair, it's not a vamp bar. a vampire bar. grill. But he, he's like, what, you hang out at a bar? And then he goes and hangs out with a supernatural person in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Damon kisses the very tall bartender. Yes. They have herstory, Ash. Mm-hmm. The bartender, we find out, is a witch. Yes. A witch that used to date Damon. She said mm-hmm. he broke her heart. Mm. The irony of what's to come. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> you are now entering the quiet zone. Oh, okay, so Jeremy <laughs> rolls into the oh, library. Yeah. Uh-huh. You are now entering the quiet zone is a sign <laughs> yeah. in the background, like the twilight zone. It was a really big sign and like v- very highlighted in this shot. Like whoever idea that was was like, we got to get a shot of that sign. <laughs> Looks good. All right. I'm glad you liked it. Jeremy meets a gal, Ash. Mm-hmm. What, where's he at with Vicky right now? He thinks Vicky is just maybe in VA Beach or something like yeah, that. Yeah, she had to leave and... Yeah. Okay, he, and so... he's pretty much over that. He's over that, but he had some cajoling. Yeah. So that's making the, the, the bitter pill a little easier to swallow. Definitely. So he meets a gal. Anna. Anna. Mm-hmm. They have a meet cute, Ash. Jeremy gets spooked by a book falling, and then Anna comes around the corner, and then they bump heads. Yeah. (laughs) There's so many bumping heads, romantic comedy things. It's true. You got to reach for the same thing, bump heads. I don't know if I've ever, like, bumped heads in that particular way, where you both are reaching for a thing and you bump heads, but I am notoriously clumsy, Mm -hmm. and I bump into things and people all the time. Yeah. I'm a de- I'm like a cat. I have very good <laughs> reflexes. <laughs> so that's why we get along. 
That's the only reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bonnie. Oh, okay. Bonnie's at Graham's house, right? Mm-hmm. She's like, she's like, I need help with this spell. Or like, she's like, I need some information. She's looking through books. She's like, and Graham's comes home and she's like, there's no information in any of these books. She's like looking through the books, like <laughs> so crazily. She would never be able to read any of that stuff. She's just like <laughs> opening a book and flipping through the pages. And like, there's nothing anywhere. <laughs> like, well. Read it. Yeah. It takes a while to read a book. Yeah. There's kind of a method to reading. Yeah. But maybe she's read it all before. Maybe she's just... She's just perusing, trying to find something. Mm-hmm. But Grams is like, um, it's not in there, friend. No. No. Bonnie is scared. She's scared. <laughs> she went through a traumatic event with Emily Bennett. She found out about vampires. Mm. She That was a lot. And now she's too scared to use her powers. Yeah. I mean, she might have like sort of a traumatic block, Ash. Yeah. She doesn't want to invite that sort of um, thing back into her body or her life. Well, witches are very emotional also. So you have to be All like the ones I know, for in, sure. In the right <laughs> headspace to be able to do magic. It's true. Elena calls Jenna. She lies, Ash. Uh-huh. The bartender witch helped Damon get in the tomb 20 years ago. Um, and it didn't work, I guess? She didn't really elaborate. She... And she was like, I helped you with that 20 years ago. Yeah. So. And in that conversation, they mentioned the comet, crystal, and spell. Like, mm-hmm. you need those things. And so the comet was back. Yeah. The crystal's back in the mix. And now the spell. The, so now I was well, like. They ha- but the crystal's destroyed now mm. because Emily Bennett destroyed it. But mm-hmm. that's what Damon was trying to gather. Mm-hmm. He was like, the comet. Got to get that. Cri- That's why he wanted that crystal so bad, mm-hmm. so that he could open the tomb. But Emily mm-hmm. Bennett was like, "Nope, not a good idea. Going to destroy this crystal." So he's going to his other witch friend Bree to figure out Bree. what else he could do. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "I already helped you twenty years ago. It wasn't yeah. good." <laughs> yeah. But this show, just like all other shows, you get little bits of information. So they do eventually like explain the tomb very well. Coming up? In this in the show. Okay. Um, Ash, you seen The Green Mile? Yep. <laughs> it's a good good movie, a Stephen King joint. Mm-hmm. John Coffey uh is the guy in the on the on death row that Tom Hanks is uh trying to not get killed on death row. Mm-hmm. His name is John Coffey. Coffee like the drink but spelled different. Mm-hmm. Brie like the cheese, only spelled different. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like listening and listening, like, what in the world is he going to say? Typical Pete takes too long to explain things. <laughs> Bonnie is back at the cemetery. Hey, Ash. What? You got any cemetery stories that aren't like sad and. I would go to the cemetery every year on Easter. <laughs> uh huh. Um, I do actually have a cemetery story. It's tangentially related to me. One of the Easter Sundays that we went to the cemetery, um, my, my brothers had gotten a wiffle ball bat set Ooh. from the Easter Bunny, and we would we were allowed to bring some of our things with us. So it was a long drive and everything, and so they were playing with the wiffle ball bat and the wiffle ball at the cemetery, which that sounds silly, but they were. Mm-hmm. And my older brother, my oldest brother hit my younger brother in the face with the wiffle ball bat. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't remember what happened exactly at that moment, but I do know that eventually my brother's tooth died and it turned gray. Yeah. And he had to have some dental work. And, then, and he was like, we were we were young. I mean, he might have been like 10 or something. I know, I'm, I've just been cringing the whole time because <laughs> I've heard this story many times. Uh-huh. And it's just, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, that's my cemetery story. The irony of your teeth dying at a <laughs> cemetery. Yeah. And of course you know that I asked you that question because I have. <laughs> of course. That's why, that's why I wasn't even going to ask. Um, in middle school, I went to hmm, Jake's birthday party. Mm-hmm. I think a, a guy named Jake. Uh, the Bruin twins were there, Ash. Okay. A couple of twins. I think my buddy Kenny was there. Mm-hmm. We walked over to the cemetery that was by Jake's house. Mm-hmm. Ash, 
We saw like I think that probably some teens had been there and done some kind of ritual or whatever. We seriously found a pig's head. Nuh-uh. Yes. Wow. We found a pig's head. It was in one of these like aluminum trays or whatever. Ugh. It was really weird. That is very weird. <laughs> you never told me that story. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to spook you out. All right. They're back at the bar. And Stefan calls Elena. Elena is grumpy and, like, wants answers about how she's connected to Catherine, Mm -hmm. which we do find out a little later, so we won't discuss that yet. And then Brie, um, like the cheese was felt different, uh, (laughs) makes a shady call to we don't know who. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Bonnie falls into, like, a whole big thing at the... Speaking of cemeteries, the cemetery. Yeah, so she goes back to the location where... Where the cemetery weirdos were. <laughs> yeah, well, also where the crystal was destroyed. Mm-hmm. And she's like trying... She's supposed to try to overcome her fears so that her magic starts working. But then, yeah, she falls in. Yeah. Big old hole. Yeah, and so Elena was just in a car accident and Bonnie just fell into a tomb. And they both kind of have the same little scratch on their forehead. Yeah. You said, <laughs> Ash said, these... People just have little scratches on their foreheads. That's it. Which is true. And then, but then right after that, they did show that Bonnie had also scraped her knee pretty bad. Well, there you go. But initially, it was like, Elena's got this same little scratch, and then Bonnie's got this same little scratch. I was like, that's all? (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And so Bonnie has fallen into this tomb, and then she sees a pentagram or some kind of thing on the wall, and she gasps. A pentagram. Very scary. It was a pentagram. It looked like it, I think it was a pentagram on a door. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's probably it. The tomb the door. door. To the tomb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stefan rolls over to Grams. Grams won't invite Stefan in. Nope. They also have her story, mm-hmm. Ash. Uh, they they talk about how that um, Grams knew Stefan from back in the day. Yeah. I think they talk about it after. I think at this point, he's just like looking for Bonnie. And then he shakes her hand. And then she's all, okay. I, I know what you are, but I trust you because you let me shake your hand, which means that I can see your mm-hmm. thoughts. Yeah. And then so she kind of gave Stefan a clue about where Bonnie might be, even though Grams didn't know for sure, but Stefan knew because he was with her when she did the whole thing with Emily Bennett. So then Stefan goes to find Bonnie in the woods. Yes. Then we jump back to the library. Mm-hmm. Anna is homeschooled, Ash. (laughs) But she knows all about the library. Everyone's homeschooled, Pete. (laughs) Well, these days. In this economy? (laughs) Um, She knows about vamps, though. She's homeschooled and knows about vamps. Hmm. Might she be a vamp? Hmm. We'll see. Vampires are a metaphor, she says, for the... Oh, no. Jeremy says, vampires are a metaphor for the demon of the day. Mm -hmm. Allegorical vampires. Interesting. So he's all talking about mm-hmm. his theory about that there weren't real vampires, but it, they were talking about what the issues of the society were. Mm-hmm. Little does he know. Yeah. And he also was like, well, my uncle or whoever, or my great great grandfather um, was wrote fiction, and this is all fictionalized yeah. and stuff. And Anna's trying to watch a movie over at his house and stuff. Yeah, well, she's like, I gotta go, and then she keeps staying, and then mm-hmm. she's like, no, I really gotta go. <laughs> Elena t- finally talks to someone about Catherine, and it's Damon. Yeah, is this before or after they start taking shots? I think, no, this is, a- this is before, because Damon does some vamsplaining. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he can eat burgers, Ash. Mm-hmm. Hot coffee, alcohol, burgers. What a life. Sounds like my life. <laughs> or death. Ooh, uh-oh. Maybe I'm a vamp. Yeah. <laughs> you like hot coffee, though? Well, hot tea. Um, but and he also loves pickles. Like you. Yeah. So that's part of your vamp repertoire. That's exactly. Ed Zachary, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, after this convo, gets a brew dog, Ash. A beer. Yeah, she's like, I guess I will. She was offered a drink earlier, and she was like, no. And then now she's like, I guess now I will. We see her sip the beer, and her face says that she does not like it. No, she like shudders. <laughs> what a funny detail to leave in. Well, she, well I think it's a good... 
moment because it helps you remember that she is a high school girl and maybe she hasn't really drank that much. Yeah. And we certainly haven't seen her like as a party girl. No. Even though she is popular and all this, but yeah, she drinks that beer like, oh, I'm going to get this beer and she takes a sip and she's like, Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. She gets the shivers. I like that. But not for long. <laughs> no. Later on. Stefan creeps up on Bonnie in the tomb. Yeah. He rolls down there. I know. I was like, he scared her so bad. And I was yeah. thinking, why wasn't he just like, Bonnie, yeah. is that uh, you? Uh, uh, hey, Bonnie, it's Stefan. Like, like, he could have spent one second to like announce himself. But I guess in true vampire fashion, he just whooshed in. Just walking around our small town home, I have to like announce myself when I enter the room yeah. that Ash is in. Like she'll be in the bathroom doing whatever. <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll walk in and I'll be like, <clears throat> just so like, because I've walked in so many times and Ash has turned around and been like, ah, I didn't know you were there. It's like, well, we're on quarantine. We live in a small house. I live here. Yeah. You should expect that I, I might. Ju- you just don't get it because n- you, that's never happened to you. I've never walked in a room and you've been like, huh, you scared me. <laughs> You're always just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Because I have the sense. Unless I can hear your ankles cracking as you walk. If I'm walking up the steps, you're going to hear me coming. Yeah. Other than that, you need to be like, hey. (laughs) I'm I'm here. Yeah. Stefan should have given her a little what's up. He should have. And then he's like, (laughs) pug snore in the background. Then he's like, close your eyes. I'm going to whoosh you. To safety. Uh-huh. And he does. And Bonnie says that she heard vamps behind the door. Yeah. I didn't hear that in the soundtrack. It was, I felt like, I don't know if I could actually hear it or if you could tell that she was listening. And then yeah. I just imagined that I heard it. Does that make sense? I need to, for, um, hmm, for Vampiti Diaries Part 2, we'll go back and rewatch everything. <laughs> But, um, and we'll listen real close. We'll listen close. But uh, but um, Bonnie was also concerned. She was like, are they hurting? Because they've been in there for so long without food. And he's like, well, at first, but now hmm. they're at the point of desiccation or whatever, which that's crazy. Yeah. Um, These people are going to look rough when they get out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you wanted is super old. <laughs> yeah. Catherine's going to be like. <laughs> Give um, me my ring. <laughs> Give me say, my ring, Alaric. I liked this moment between Bonnie and Stefan, and it is a little bit of like foreshadowing or like starting of the fact that Bonnie and Stefan trust each other because mm-hmm. he relied on her to do the spell, even though she didn't actually get to do the spell. Mm-hmm. And then she, he was able to save her when she fell in the hole. So. I like that little, like, friendship-building moment. Yeah, me too. Especially because they're going to have to team up, <laughs> as I've been Pete-dicting. Okay. Pete-dicting? Now you're using it as a verb? Oh, yeah. And I am also a Pete-dictor. <laughs> um, okay, back to the bar. Uh, now everyone is drinking with Bree, Ash. Elena is thrashed. Yeah, except that one of the bar people is like, you should be on the floor by now because Elena's yeah. been just doing so many shots, but Elena was kind of just chilling. I think they threw in a line like, whoa, that was your third one or something. <laughs> there was something. I feel like, look, I, not to brag, Ash, but I work on television shows. Uh-huh. And um, I've had to deal with standards and practices notes. Mm-hmm. I bet they had to put little ADR in there mm-hmm. of... Oh, it's only your third shot. To, so it wasn't drinking in, a teen drinking in excess. Like there has to mm. be like, um, so for example, probably she had to grimace when she sipped the beer. Yeah. There had to be a consequence to her drinking in order for it to play on a teen show. I got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, she should have been acting way more drunk than she was. But maybe, yeah, maybe that was directed. She wasn't allowed to act like really drunk. Yeah, or like to be loving it. Like there has to be consequences, basically, Mm -hmm. if it's for teens. Hey, Ash, right about then, evil Ben Affleck shows up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
or regular Ben Affleck, depending on how you view Ben Affleck. Oh. <laughs> and his, this character's name is Lee. Lee. His lower face looks like the guy Elena hit with the car. Hmm. Was that him? Hmm. We'll never know. Also, Ash, we know this guy. Not in real life. The actor? Yeah. One of Bullet's sons... From the OC. From the OC. Bullet, who um, eventually... Well, spoilers for the OC. Julie Cooper, Nickel Cooper, um, marries Bullet Mm -hmm. towards the end of the last season. Bullet has a bunch of sons. This guy's one of them. Yeah. He is. I When I saw him in this episode, I was like, that guy's from the OC, but I forgot that he was Bullet's son. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to look that part up? No. Yes, you did. No. Really? No, I did not. I, I only had to look up. I was like, was that guy named Bullet? Oh. That's what I had to look up. I knew he was one of his sons. <laughs> we jump over. We jump back to the library. Jeremy likes vampire movies, though. The irony. Mm-hmm. Anna... Wants to watch them with him. Mm-hmm. But aren't they saying their ancestors are the same? <laughs> <laughs> or their ancestors had similar but contradictory information, or they mm-hmm. interpreted their ancestors' information in their diaries differently. Yeah, I mean, it's probably that their ancestors are both from Mystic Falls, and so they were hanging out around the same time. Mm-hmm. All right, so back to the bar. They're jumping back and forth, Ash. Mm-hmm. What? And they're in the same time zone. Why is it nighttime? Or I guess they're day drinking. Yeah. Because Jeremy is fully in the middle of a school day at the library and Elena. I don't think it's a school day for Jeremy. I feel like it's after school. Mm, could be after school. Could be a little happy. It's a little extracurricular library moment. And, and yeah, and a little happy hour for Elena and Damon. Uh-huh. Elena goes or, out. Or not so happy hour. Oh, I like that. Elena gets grabbed up outside the bar. Mm-hmm. Bree, set her up. Yeah, what the heck? Damon follows her. The mad vamp, evil Ben Affleck, douses Damon in gasoline. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, Elena was like the bait for Damon because Bree sent Elena outside. Mm-hmm. And then... When Damon came in, she was like, where's your friend? And then, because she obviously knew she wasn't there. And then Damon's looking around and is like, oh, she, a shoe is just right here. Yeah. And then he goes to look for her, which is another example of Damon caring about Elena. We get it. He cares. And then he goes outside and, yeah, immediately gets caught up with Lee doused in gasoline. And how much of this was premeditated, though? Because is evil Ben Affleck, did he crash... Elena's car, or is that going to be somebody else? Like, because if he did, then how would that trigger Damon to go down to Georgia? Or is it just a coincidence that Damon went down to Georgia to talk to Bree? I'll give you one answer. There are more vampires than you think. Well, I know that. So there, not everyone is like. So they'll they'll tease. Not a, everything is blamed on the same vampire all the time. Right. They've kept it pretty compact with like introducing somebody and having them do something in that episode yeah lexi for example alaric is having his little run but to just show this guy or whatever this person getting hit by a car and then not show them at all i assumed it was evil ben affleck Mm -hmm. maybe it's not okay well we'll see maybe it's not (laughs) (laughs) Damon killed this guy's girlfriend. After, well, we find out it's Lexi. Damon killed yes. Lexi. We know that. But this guy's PO'd. Lee was Lexi's boyfriend, who was a human when they started dating. And then Lexi turned Lee mm-hmm. into a vampire so that they could be vampire lovers mm. forever. Because mm. if he didn't turn Lee, then Lee would have eventually died as a human and Lexi would... And Lexi would continue to live without him. Yep. The old Benny Butt scenario. But that's also the first time they talk about this sort of thing where, like, humans might want to be turned intentionally. So I think that's part of why they have this even happen. Mm. And the other part that I think why this scene happens is because it gives Elena the opportunity to save Damon. Ah. 
and he might owe her a little something. Also, and it just starts like just like Bonnie and Stefan are starting to build their friendship, mm-hmm. and now there's a little Delena happening. And how dare you speak that ship name? <laughs> and they start to have a little friendship, and they start to trust each other. Yeah, because Elena talks Lee out of setting Damon on fire. Yeah, by telling him stuff that Lexi had told her. Yeah, but also I didn't buy any of that. I think she did. They had a little girl chat. No, no, I bought. I I understand that they had the girl chat, but why would Elena say that stuff to this mad oh, guy? Stop him from killing. Stop Damon. him from killing Damon. No, no, no. And this episode was not a great look for Damon. He's killing two lady relationship. Oh guy. yeah, we didn't get to that. Scene no, no, yet. we're getting there. Okay. Elena saves Damon. Stefan brings Bonnie back to Graham's place. Stefan has saved Bonnie. And Steph- this is when they have their little chat. Yeah, Stefan knows Graham's as Sheila. Mm-hmm. Sheila was a civil rights activist in Mystic Falls, Virginia. Yes. That's cool. That was a nice little thread. And then he and she remembers him because he was like a supporter and mm-hmm. um, they had a little friendship back in the day. It's tight. Yeah. Damon says goodbye to Bree back at the bar. Grimoire can open the tomb. The Grimoire. Grimoire. Yeah. <laughs> Grim Grimoire. Grimoire. The Grimoire. Which is um, Emily Bennett's spell book. Ah. They said if you find Emily's Grimoire. Grimoire. Then you can see the spell she used to close the tomb, and then you can reverse the spell. Hmm. Without needing the crystal and the comet. They're going to need that. What'd you call it? Meteor. Meteor. (laughs) (laughs) Bree, she knows the deed, Sash. Yep. Hey, Damon then rips her heart out of her chest. Broke her heart, then ripped it out. Yeah. This is the first heart ripping out that we get to see in this show. And by you saying that, it means there will be many more, I guess. All right, so you've seen getting shot by bullets. Wooden bullets. Mm Mm-hmm. Getting staked. Mm-hmm. Getting your getting your blood sucked out till you're dead. Uh-huh. Getting your heart ripped out. Mm-hmm. Getting have they done a neck snapping? Oh yeah. Okay, a neck snapping. Uh, I think those are all the pe- ways they've killed people so far. Do you have a preference? <laughs> mm, give me the sampler. <laughs> give me all the above. <laughs> no, I did think the heart out of the chest was pretty brutal. And then Damon just casually rolls out. You think, you think he'd be nicer after just being spared his life, Ash? Mm-hmm. Damon. Yeah. Well. Damon. He's like when people try to turn on him, he's just really not gonna forgive them. No, he is. He's like, you set me up to get killed. I'm gonna kill you at the end. He's emotional, Ash, and a lot of these emotional people out here in this world, vampires are not. They have the exterior of like, no, I'm cool, blah, blah, blah. But then actually they're the most emotional people. Exactly. Like that guy I dated who told me he was an emotional vampire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damon and Elena have a road trip wrap-up. Mm-hmm. I saved your life. Now Damon owes her. Yeah. We'll see where that goes. Maybe it will go into Elena, Bonnie, Stefan, Damon, teaming up. <laughs> Teams against, against the vamps. Outside forces. <laughs> Elena confronts Stefan. They do their convo where they reverse their relationship situation every episode, Ash. Yes, they do. Stefan says he met Elena the day her parents died. Ash. Yeah, this is mind-blowing Bombshell time. Yeah. What did you think about hearing all this? Stefan saved Elena... Then stalked her to see if she was Catherine. Huh? Okay, well, pause. When he saved Elena, it, it was when her, she was in the car mm-hmm. with her parents, and they got in a car accident on Wickery Bridge, and they were drowning. Yep. And, and Stefan talked to the dad. Yeah, Stefan goes in to save the parents, because I guess maybe he saw them first or whatever, and the dad's like, no, 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 save her first. Don't... So, I won't let you save me until you save Elena, mm-hmm. all without obviously talking because they're underwater. So then 
Stefan reports that he saved Elena and went back for the parents, but it was too late. And then once he saw that Elena looked like Catherine, then he stalked her. Yeah. Which this isn't how you know Stefan's giving the full truth because yes. he could have maybe left that part out a yeah. little bit or uh-huh. like toned it down. Like, yeah. And then I noticed you looked like Catherine and I thought that was weird. Not that I watched you and that for every day until I realized that you weren't her. Yeah. Basically, Ash. That part was a little weird. Yeah, it's like he was scrolling through her Instagram. Like, he saved her and then was, like, scrolling through her Instagram mm-hmm. and then, like, accidentally hit a heart on there yeah. from, like, four years ago. Yeah. He was putting it out all out on the line like that. It is like that, but that could not have had happened because Instagram didn't exist. I know. How, how did we survive? We watched The Vampire Diaries instead. Okay, so my question was, where was Jeremy in all this? Was he not in the car, I guess? No, he wasn't in the car. Okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I mean, that's fine. You don't have to be in the car with your whole family at all times, even though we are. <laughs> even though we do have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he's like, well, you were adopted, Elena. Yeah, that's is how he finds out that she wasn't Catherine. Yes, but that means that she could potentially be in Catherine's bloodline. Bloodlines. Bloodlines. So he's like, you were adopted, Elena. Then they kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Always the weird thing leads to kissing. Yep. Uh, well, when you're both hot and you love each other and you want to give a little kiss every once in a while. Yeah, doesn't take much. Yeah, I mean, but they still love each other even though Stefan was holding that information. But Elena is like, you could just tell me the truth. My whole life is weird. Mm -hmm. I know you're a vampire. I'm dealing with that. Just tell me the whole story. Yeah. Aunt Jenna is PO'd, Ash. Oh, she's so mad. Yeah, but then Elena switches it up on her and it's like... Well, Aunt Jenna's so mad because um, Elena has been gone for like a... At least yeah, a day. A day. Yeah. And hasn't been answering Jenna or telling her where she was. No. She finally she gets has home. A, she has a right to be mad, mm-hmm. but then Elena is like, am I adopted? And then... Yeah, well, she's like, well, you're not telling me the truth or whatever. We need yeah. to be honest. And she's like, speaking of honesty, um, why didn't you ever tell me? And she's like, what? That I'm adopted. And Jenna's just like, uh, they told me not to tell you. Didn't think that was going to come up today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thought it was a regular Tuesday. <laughs> All right. So the, the uh, episode is wrapping up. Alaric grading papers at the bar. You ever grade papers at the bar, Ash? Um, I do grade papers in my job, but no. I've graded them at the pool. There you no, go. Not at the bar. Sees Damon. Damon killed his wife, we learn in this moment. Damon has a habit of killing significant others. He did with the evil Ben Affleck. He killed Lexi. Mm -hmm. Now we learned he killed Alaric's wife. What the heck, Damon? Why do you think he killed Alaric's wife? Do you think it was like just some random I'm hungry vampire moment? Or do you think there was like a real situation? They don't show it. Here, hmm. so but I'm just curious. What do you think? Why did he kill Alaric's wife? I don't know. <laughs> Can't say. Not enough info. All right, fair enough. Maybe maybe Alaric was getting too close to the truth. Okay. But then he would kill Alaric, not his wife. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you just said he killed the spouses. Damon yeah. Uh huh. So maybe he, maybe he, you're right, and he killed his wife. Instead of a brother dater, he's a spouse killer? <laughs> or both. Alaric <laughs> is pissed. Did Ooh. they say his wife's name yet? Because I almost no. said it. Okay. No. All right. Alaric is pissed. He does something like he puts down his glass or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they play a song like in the movie Saw. When Jigsaw, you know, he shuts the door sometimes at oh. the end of it. And it's like... I don't know. I wish I could hear it. But they play a song, a cue just like that. I didn't recognize that, but now that you're saying it, I know what you're talking about. And you feel so suspenseful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very suspenseful song. Yeah. And I just pictured Jigsaw shutting that big metal door, latching it, and then like somebody being like, no. Yeah, it's like at the end. Oof. Um, But that definitely lets you know that there's more to that story. 
Oh, yeah. That's not the end of that chapter, Ash. No. How many fangs, Ash? I got to give it two fangs. Because of all the truths that were given mm-hmm. with Stefan saving Elena and her being adopted and the new ships that are emerging, new characters. Ooh. I liked it actually a lot better than the turning point. Me too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little chat about this off pod where mm-hmm. we were like, yeah, the turning point. This was had more of a turning point, I feel like. Yeah. What, what, how about you? How many fangs? 1.99 fangs, Ash. Ash. You're still holding out? Or are you going to only give two fangs to, for like the finale episode? I don't know. I just I want to be bowled over. <laughs> this was so good. It was. That's why it's almost. <laughs> 1.99999 infinity. Yeah, with a little bar over one of the nines. Repeating. So yeah. mm-hmm. It was All good. Right. It was very good. It was very good. Yeah. Pete Dictions. Yeah. I would guess Alaric is not going to kill Damon. <laughs> okay. Because I think Damon's probably around for a bit. That's is, a good guess. <laughs> is Damon going to kill Alaric? Maybe. Or maybe there's like some kind of like bro truce. Like not between brothers, but between like bro dudes. Like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know you killed my wife, but some reason. Maybe they need each other for something. Maybe so. Is Alaric a vamp hunter? He's at least hunting one vamp. Damon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I might be on to something with this three rings, Ash. Okay. Okay. Alaric might be wearing Damon's ring. Mm-hmm. Bonnie will eventually open that tomb. <laughs> Maybe Damon will force her somehow. Catherine must be an ancestor of Elena or whatever, vice versa, Elena or whatever. Some sort of way. And I had Pete dicted that. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Good. A lot going on. Halfway through the season, Ash, 11 eps out of 22, first season. That's awesome. Very exciting. And have you grown to like the show more and more? Hmm. I enjoy the show. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited for the back 11? <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I am. Me too. Yeah, 11 more eps. Man, we'll do something a little special before then. We'll have another little bonus app or something like that before then. We won't do a full straight up 11. Okay. We'll do maybe around 20 or something. We'll do something mm. fun. Okay. Okay. If you like the Vampire Diaries. But only if. And or, though, (laughs) you are a young adult. And or. You should check out my young adult book series, The Happenstances. Comedy, fun, short reads, Dream by the Pool, or Stuck in Your House. Mm -hmm. At tinyurl.com slash the happenstances. For any questions or concerns, follow me at Peter L. Harmon on Twitter or Instagram. Ash isn't on Twitter, and she's private on Instagram. If you have something to say to her that isn't weird, I'll tell her. Or email thehappenstances at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate or review this pod. For sure. We love that. Let yeah. us know where you're listening from. We could give you yeah. a little shout out. Yeah, we love these, these global listeners. It's yeah. a global pod now. If you say like your name and where you're listening from, we'll give you a little shout out. Yes. Um... Hey, don't tweet spoilers. No, don't do that, though. Comment, but don't, do, don't tell us any spoilers. No, you will get muted, not blocked. I need the follower count. Ash, we end very abruptly, but before we end abruptly, do you have anything else you would like to say? No. <laughs>